Have you ever wondered why your period didn't start and when it did, you had severe bleeding? Or have you struggled trying to get pregnant? I want to help you understand what causes and how to treat polycystic ovarian syndrome. Welcome to Women's Healthcare Answers, and this is Jeff McQuarrie, a Tennessee gynecologist. I want to focus on you, especially if your gynecologic problems are dominating your life and you want to take back control. You can solve your problems with answers and solutions I will give you. Today, we're going to talk about polycystic ovarian syndrome. So the generally accepted definition of that problem of polycystic ovarian syndrome which typically we call PCOS, has three criteria to diagnose it. Number one is a big word, hyperandrogenism. And this is caused by high testosterone levels from the ovaries. This leads to hirsutism or abnormal male pattern hair growth and acne. But oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea are issues characterized as very few irregular periods or totally missing your periods altogether. So those terms are associated with PCOS. Uh, PCOS uh, by ultrasound often shows small cysts surrounding the outer edges of one or both of the ovaries. Other common factors, although not part of the diagnosis, are obesity and insulin resistance, so high insulin levels. Both of these problems are commonly caused by high insulin levels in the body, like diabetes, but it's more like of a pre-diabetes. But any of these factors can vary between individuals, but are the main reason for the diagnosis. PCOS happens in approximately 6 to 10% of women. But how does it happen? It's not genetic, and there is no genetic screening test. It's mostly associated with poor ovulation, so that normal menstrual cycles rarely, if ever, happen. As I said before, obesity is a problem, but even 20% of women with PCOS are not overweight, so it's not always that. The ovaries always produce more testosterone in this problem, though. The high insulin levels I talked about cause changes in your body by, one, decreased protein in the blood called SHBG. This normally traps testosterone, creating more circulating active testosterone. So it's supposed to do that. It's not, it's not there. When the insulin level rises, it puts the brakes also on burning fat for fuel. And it encourages storage of incoming food as fat. So you store fat. Who wants to do that? So possible direct stimulation of the hypothalamus and this is part of the brain that increases appetite, may also cause weight gain. What problems uh, are my patients having when they come to see me, though? They're typically having period problems, from no periods at all to very heavy periods, but typically just very irregular. They may also have infertility issues and definite difficulty with getting pregnant and uh, medications can help with ovulation, but those pregnancy problems also not only uh, have problems getting pregnant, but once you are pregnant, there's an increased risk for gestational diabetes and high blood pressure. They may also present skin problems, including hirsutism, acne, and even hair loss. And because of those high insulin and poor ovulation, there's also really a slow metabolism. Uh, fatty liver is not uncommon. So where there's fat actually build up in the liver. Sleep apnea is not uncommon. And also even type 2 diabetes. So where prediabetes has progressed to diabetes. Also heart disease. Risk of even precancer or cancer of the uterus. And a lot of mood changes is what I often see. But how do I uh, diagnose PCOS? How do physicians do it? We first must rule out other reasons for testosterone increase. And, you know, the bad things such as tumors that are producing testosterone, but also something called congenital adrenal hyperplasia. It's kind of a rare condition and you can be born with it, uh, but it's not common. 
people taking testosterone related steroids also. And you've heard about the guys trying to bulk up, right? So Cushing syndrome, where adrenal gland produces much more male hormone. And the adrenal glands are just above the kidneys. But with irregular periods, you could have premature ovarian failure as well. And if you're later in life, it may now be menopause. But there's actually other glandular things that can happen, such as low thyroid, so which is hypothyroidism, and high prolactin levels that could interfere with ovulation as well. But we will certainly take a good history of you and see if there's evidence for testosterone excess. We'll also want to know your family history. Do you have diabetes in the family? Any heart disease? But on physical examination, I'm going to be looking for things such as high blood pressure, obesity, uh, measured in what we call BMI. Anything greater than 30 is considered to be obese, or anything greater than 40 is considered to be morbidly obese. Look for balding, acne, abnormal body hair distribution, we look for ovarian enlargement on pelvic examination, acanthosis nigricans, a sign of insulin resistance associated with PCOS. And it's this velvety, pigmented, uh, darkened skin, often noted in the creases of the neck, uh, kind of in the armpit areas, under the breast areas, in the abdominal fold, kind of in the middle, and even around the vaginal area. So if you notice those kind of things, that could be high insulin levels. So labs. What labs am I going to do? I'm going to do a testosterone level. I'm going to look for thyroid uh, problems. I'm going to look for that prolactin uh, problem and also fasting glucose and insulin. I'm also going to look for FSH and LH levels. Uh, it Typically in an abnormal ratio. A normal ratio is FSH greater. LH can be greater. Also, uh, cholesterol can be elevated, and uh, all other uh, triglycerides and things can be high. And so we're going to test for that. But I might do an ultrasound looking for enlargement in one or both of the ovaries as well. And typically what we look for is 12 or more of those very small cysts that are just surrounding the outer edges of the ovaries. So if you like this video so far, hit the like button. I hear that it really helps with the YouTube algorithms, but please comment as well. And, and if you would, even subscribe because, God forbid, if you miss any of my new medical videos coming out every week, I need you here. It keeps me going, and I want to help you. So back to the information. I know you wanted to know how PCOS is treated. Well, <laughs> exercise and weight loss. You know, that's, that's a hard, always the hard thing, and you don't want to hear that, do you? But you, it can lower your testosterone levels in the blood, leading to spontaneous resumption of your periods and, and also improve pregnancy rates. It will also decrease your cholesterol and decrease hair growth. So just diet and exercise uh, can really help, and weight loss. So, But we need to treat irregular periods, uh, and that's really the most uh, common thing to do, and we treat that often with birth control pills. So the benefits of birth control pills is that they lower that LH. Remember we talked about that FSH and LH level? Well, those LH is not supposed to be high, so it lowers that LH, and that will decrease production of testosterone. Uh, and that decreased testosterone in the blood it helps to trap it by proteins as well, which actually will increase. And that helps you to regulate and resume normal periods. But there's multiple types, uh, none better than any other, except drospirinone, uh, which is a testosterone that's used in some birth control pills, helps more with blocking testosterone. And this is a birth control pill called Yaz or Yasmin, and there's lots of generic versions of that now. But there's also uh, Depo-Provera, which is uh, the, the progesterone shot. There's also a medication called Norethindrone. But the problem with these progesterones is they can cause some irregular bleeding at times. It may not really have as great of impact on testosterone and fewer of the positive benefits of oral contraceptives but they can still be very helpful if you have very heavy bleeding. 
So our next step is going to be insulin uh, sensitizing agents. And these are medications commonly used in diabetes. Metformin is used, but it's not FDA approved for this indication. It does not typically cause hypoglycemia or low blood sugar when it's used for PCOS, but it will really help you decrease your weight, often a 5 to 10% loss without trying too much. But if you're on metformin, you need other contraception. Since ovulation may improve, guess what? You're pregnant, which is not such a good thing if you weren't planning on that. So a big problem, as discussed, is getting pregnant if you have PCOS. There's also a medication called letrozole, and it may be more effective than another medication called clomiphene. So it, again, letrozole is not FDA approved for this indication, but can be very effective and doctors use it all the time. Another uh, potentially effective uh, method, which doctors use sometimes and gynecologists will do, is laparoscopic ovarian drilling. And this has been used for PCOS but it's kind of controversial, but it could be something that you want to talk to your doctor about. So now, what you have been waiting for, how do I treat PCOS? First, I diagnose, looking for the typical signs of too much testosterone. Also, too much insulin resistance and poor ovulation and irregular periods. So I'm looking for all those things. So I'm going to order some labs, including free testosterone. I'll get a prolactin level, a TSH, an FSH, LH, fasting glucose, and insulin. Now, I went through that list because I've said them before, but don't worry about that so much. We're going to do some labs to help you. But I don't typically get an ultrasound because I consider PCOS more of a functional diagnosis. And I don't want to delay a proper diagnosis, and, and it will sometimes delay that. But I will get an ultrasound if there's other issues, such as maybe pain is causing your problems. But my treatment pattern for PCOS irregular periods and metabolism changes is combination estrogen and progesterone oral contraceptives. But I typically, as I told you before, I use the drospirinone, which is Yaz or Yasmin. And there are many generics uh, for that. Uh, the next thing that I will put you on and something that we haven't talked about is spironolactone. So this is a diuretic uh, agent, which can increase your potassium levels. Uh, so we, we need to monitor that. But we'll go up to about 100 milligrams on that. And the next thing, as we discussed just a bit ago, metformin. Uh, so metformin can be very effective. And I typically start at about a 500 milligram and use the extended release at dinner time. And we can go up to 750 or 1500 milligrams daily if you're able to tolerate that. Sometimes you can have some nausea and diarrhea, which are really common when you start, but they tend to get better over time. I will then monitor my patients for proper effect initially every three to six months, then yearly when stable on their medication regimen. But as far as the other issues, hirsutism and acne, uh, I, I definitely want you to do physical hair removal and certainly weight loss and exercise. But all the medications as noted above really counteract uh, those testosterone levels. But what if you have infertility? Uh, I'm gonna work up all potential causes of infertility, including poor ovulation. And if I determine that it is ovulation problem, then we're going to use letrozole. And again, it works very well. I think it's better than Clomid, but either can be used very effectively. And if that's what your doctor is doing, uh, certainly either's okay. So the dosage can be increased as needed for proper ovulation. But we have to be careful, especially in polycystic ovarian syndrome, with what's called hyperovulation. And that's ovulating too many eggs and potentially getting pregnant with more than one baby. So twins, triplets. So we try to keep away from that. I haven't seen that too much, but it is possible. But you know, the, the main thing is don't continue to suffer with PCOS. Get help from your gynecologist. They really know how to diagnose and treat this problem. So 
Hopefully you feel you learned something. And as I always say, I've enjoyed being here with you. I would love to help you solve your problems at Women's Healthcare Answers. Remember, this video is meant for information purposes only. Please consult your own healthcare provider, but it's okay to reference the information I gave you.